Hey guys, I'm Pixel Dan, and this is a review of the Game Classics Ghost and Goblins Arthur figure from Union Creative. That's right, my friends, they actually made an Arthur from Ghost and Goblins. You guys know me, I love my video game figures, and I think we've been getting some really cool, detailed action figures from Japan based on all sorts of cool video game characters. And I love seeing a lot of these retro characters brought to life in action figure form, so let's jump right in and take a look at Arthur here. As you can see, he comes in a nice window box that fully showcases the figure and many of his accessories right there inside. Uh, I also love that we've got some graphics from the game down there at the bottom. You can see Arthur kind of running across the bottom, which is very cool. And when you flip this box around to the backside, there are several pictures of the figure in various poses showing all of the different pieces and how they work with the figure. So let's go ahead and get this guy pulled out of that box and take a closer look at him. So first things first, let me bring in the tape measure. So you can see that this guy stands right at five inches tall. He's actually just shy of a full five inches, but definitely with the helmet on there, that brings him up to five inches tall. Um, and he's a very, very cool looking figure. The sculpt is really fantastic on this. I think they did a good job of capturing the look of Arthur, uh, the way he appears in a lot of the artwork for the Ghost and Goblin series. So very cool looking figure. The armor's got a bit of a nice metallic shine to it. It's not like um, reflective or vac metal or anything like that, but it's like a perfect silver paint deco uh, that's got a really nice shine to it, especially under the lights here. Great look on the face there. It's got good paint pretty much all the way across. I do have a little bit of a brown paint smear on the cheek from the beard, uh, but that is the only place I have any real paint mishaps. So the rest of the figure looks really great. He's cleanly painted, and it's a great representation of the character in action figure form. But there is a lot going on with this guy, so let's start talking about some of the things. First of all, he is highly articulated, and there's a lot of interchangeable pieces, and I'm going to show you how all of that works. If you guys have picked up any of these import video game figures, uh, say like SH Figuarts or Figma or anything like that, you probably know what to expect as far as the articulation goes. But the way a lot of these work is the joints are a little um, loose as far as they come apart a lot. And I don't mean loose like the joints are flopping around, I mean that the joints are usually interchangeable. It's usually very easy to kind of pull the figures apart uh, at all the sockets there. And did you see what just happened right when I picked him up? That shoulder pad fell right off this figure. That's actually one thing I definitely want to bring up. It's worth talking about because every time I handle this figure, these little shoulder pads fall right off the guy. Um, now, the, all of the armor on this is meant to be removable. And I'm gonna show you that feature in just a bit. But the shoulder pads there specifically are very flimsy. They do not stay attached. Just handling the figure, these things are going to pop off very easy. And that's because you can see it's just a really, really small little peg. There's a little notch in the side of the armor there and it just kind of sits in there. It doesn't really clip in or anything like that. You can kind of clip the armor around it, but it doesn't really hold it in place. Those shoulder pads are going to fall off constantly on this guy. You'll also notice I just pulled the arm out of socket. That goes right into what I was talking about with all of the removable pieces there. So before we go any further, let's talk about how all this articulation works. The head is nicely jointed at the neck. You can see it's a ball joint under there at the neck. So it allows it to swivel at both the top and the base of the neck there. You can also roll the head all the way around. Of course, that helmet is removable, which is gonna go with some of the interchangeable faces and such. They will pop out of socket if you move them too far upwards, uh, but you can see they swivel around, they move all the way around there just like that. You can swivel him with the elbow. He does have double joints at the elbow so you can bend the elbows really well. He does have really nice joints at the wrist there you can see as well so the wrist can actually roll all the way around as well as kind of swivel at the uh, place where it plugs into the forearm. So really good joints there on the wrist. He does have really great uh, joints at the waist. It's a nice ball joint there. So the whole upper body can move all the way around, roll around, move left and right there. Very fluid movement. You can see those same ball-like peg joints there on the thighs. Again, if I pull on it, it's gonna pop out a socket there, but you can pop it back in. You kind of hear it clicking back in there. So that gives you a nice range of motion on there as well. Great joints at the knees. Again, those same kind of ball joints, the ball socket joints there can roll all the way around. And then the same with the ankles there with those nice joints. Now, this guy is very, very, very flimsy and what I mean by that is he's kind of meant to be put in a pose and then left there um, when you move this guy around a lot you're gonna notice that 
it's easy to pull the arms out of socket. It's easy to pull the wrists out of socket. It's easy to get the knees unaligned. Um, and even while trying to find a way to stand this guy, you can see his joints are just kind of falling around. Now, once you find a pose, he works fine. But that's kind of how this guy is built. He is meant to really just kind of be posed and then stood on your shelf. I definitely don't think this guy was intended for play. And we're going to get into more of that as we're talking about all of these accessories. So first things first, let's talk about his weapons here. And in order to do the weapons, he does have one interchangeable armored hand. The right hand can be swapped out. You can easily pop on the new hand there, and that's the open hand, so that way he can hold on to his weapons. So we've got the lance weapon here. Um, really cool accessory, weapon that comes straight out of the game. And in order to use this, you can actually pop the uh, handle right out of the lance, so that way you can slide that through the figure's hand, and you can get him to hold on to that. Now, that's a very top-heavy accessory, but you can still find some poses where he's going to hold on to it just fine. Of course, a very cool weapon to recreate some of the scenes straight out of the video games. In addition to that, there's lots of different weapons you can pick up in the game, so it's very cool to see them include a lot of weapons with this figure. You've got the axe there, which can also fit there in the right hand. You've got the small little dagger, great paint deco on there with the same kind of silver used on that as his armor, and you've got the torch. So you've got lots of different weapons that you can mix and match, you can recreate, you know, the way that you pick up different weapons throughout running through the levels in the game, and find your desired weapon for this figure. So in addition to that, he has interchangeable faces. And this is really interesting what you can do here. So I talked about how the helmet is removable. And when you pull the helmet off, you'll notice that he's just completely bald on top and there's no ears. Well, to remedy that, we've got a couple different poses we can do with the face here. So the face actually just pops right off the front in a face plate there. And you can remove the beard, which is really, really crazy. So in its place, I can put this other beard on. There's actually little pegs on the side, and you notice that this bearded head has got ears. So this is meant to be posed with him without his helmet on, because with the ears, you can't fit the helmet on. So instead, we will give him this nice little wig here. <laughs> we'll pop his hair on, and it gives him a completely new look. Now you can pose Arthur with his helmet off, and he's got a full head of hair uh, with this cool little crown type piece going on there as well. Very cool way to uh, mix and match the parts there, uh, different ways that you can display them. And another interchangeable face, one that I really like, this one is meant for the helmet, uh, and it's a very much more video game looking face. I mean, you got those solid black eyes there. I love the teeth gritting mouth. Just a really cool alternate face that you can use on this figure instead. All right, my friends, this is where things get really crazy with Arthur. If you are a fan of Ghosts and Goblins, you might be familiar with the fact that when you get hit in the game, you lose your armor and then you run around in your boxers until you find armor again. Crazy enough, this figure can recreate that and all of the armor is removable in order to do that. So let me show you this. All of the armor can just be popped right off the figure. So you can see I just pulled the chest armor off. There's little pegs that hold it on. I already showed you guys how the shoulder armor comes off. So this is why the figure has all of those removable limbs. Basically, you're going to need to pull apart the figure at all of the joints. And you're going to pull everything out. Look at this. I am pulling the forearm out. I am pulling the uh, biceps out of the upper armor. You have uh, extra hands that don't have the armor on them, so we can clip all this back together there. I can plug that back in. So look at that. That is how I will remove the armor from his arms. It's really, really crazy. So we're gonna do that all the way through here. Let me get all of the uh, arm arms uh, situated here, and then we will move on to the lower portion of the figure. So we're gonna do the same thing down below. We're gonna pop the feet off the bottom there just remove it from the pegs you can just slide the shin armor right off there then you're going to need to remove the legs at the knee joints there so you can remove that armor and at this point you'll actually even want to remove the uh legs from the waist because then we're going to take off the loincloth piece now this is actually a very soft pliable piece it's almost like a rubbery material so it stretches around over his boxers there look at that and we have these crazy little boxers boxer leg pieces isn't this ridiculous that you just slide on the thighs now so here, let me put this thigh back in we're gonna put the other boxer piece on and then to finish it up we will reattach the legs and then this is the part that is the craziest part of them all because when i first pulled this guy out i was sitting here going now nah, wait a minute Where's his bare feet? Did they forget to put the feet in here? Oh no, my friends. The bare feet are actually inside 
the armored shoes. So in order to get those out, look at this. You actually have to remove the soles from the bottom of the armor and pop the foot out. This actually, the little dagger really comes in handy here. Look at this. You just pop the foot right out of there and then you plug it right here onto the foot peg. How crazy is that? It's just, it seems a little over the top. Like, I don't actually know if it was necessary to go this far. Maybe this was uh, just the easiest way to do this. I, I guess they really wanted to recreate the ability to pull all the armor off. I kind of feel like just some interchangeable, like, armored pieces and everything would have been better, especially with the feet. Uh, but hey, it, it works, I guess. The only downside, of course, is when he's wearing the armor, um, there's definitely always going to be some exposed skin pieces you can see around his joints. But if you want to strip him down and display him um, just in his boxers, uh, there you go, guys. We did it. He's got his strawberry-themed boxer shorts, just like in the video game. It's hilarious. And I think it's a great thing that they incorporated this because it is something that Arthur is known for in the game. I just don't know. I mean, how many of you guys are going to display him this way? It's really, really goofy. So there you go, my friends. That is a look at the new Ghost and Goblins Arthur figure. And it's really wild. Okay, so look, it's a great looking figure. It's a beautiful sculpt. I love all of the accessories. What I don't love is how the joints easily fall apart when you're posing them. I don't love that some of the armor pieces pop off so easy. Unfortunately, like the game is known for its difficulty, I feel like this figure is a little over difficult. I really do. I think it's really cool that we've got all these removable pieces and maybe it's just me. Maybe you guys will have a different experience with it. I just think there could be some areas where it could have been a little bit more simpler, maybe just giving us some interchangeable armor pieces uh, instead of having removable armor, that might have worked out a little bit better. Nonetheless, he's a great looking figure. He is definitely not meant to be played with because of how much he falls apart, so find a good pose for him and then put him up on your shelf. In order to help with that, he actually does come with a cool little display base here. It's just one of those clear bases. I do love, however, how it's got like a Nintendo looking controller on the front and it says Game Start. That's pretty cool. And then it's got the little posable arm there as well. I'm not always a huge fan of these, but this one does seem to work pretty well. It gets pretty tight around his waist. So if it helps you display him on the shelf, you've always got that option as well. So this particular figure is an import, which means you're going to have to find it at a website online that will sell import items like this. It has not been released domestically, which also means it's pretty expensive. This figure is going to run you $84.99. It is available at stores like BigBadToyStore.com if you want to check it out. But like I said, it's a bit pricey, so is it worth it? Totally up to you guys. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please hit the like button, leave me a comment, let me know what you think of this guy, and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss out on any of my toy reviews. Until next time, my friends.